I am Nancy Wise. Can this conference will now be recorded. We'll do introductions. I am Nancy Wise, Benton County Commissioner and Chair. Uh, Pat Malone, Commissioner and Vice Chair. I'm Matt Weatherall. I am the Juvenile Department Director, but this week I am acting in Joe Kirby's place as he is on vacation. Jesse Ott, uh, Deputy Director of Benton County Natural Areas, Parks and Events. Erica Milo, Board Recorder. Lynn McKee, Director of Benton County Natural Areas, Parks and Events. Hi, good morning, Sarah Hartstein, Healthy Communities Division Manager with the Health Department. All right, and I see Johan uh, just joined us. We have a couple others here that will uh, introduce themselves uh, when we get to their part on the agenda. Um, next, are there any announcements? Hearing no announcements. Uh, that brings us to review and approve the agenda. Are there any changes to the agenda? No changes. All right, that takes us to our work session. We're gonna start off with the annual report from Mary's River Watershed Council. And I see we have Holly with us. Hi, thanks for having me this morning. I'm Holly Papira. I've been with Mary's River Watershed Council here for about three and a half years. I'm going to share my screen and begin the presentation. So forgive me for any technological issues. Hopefully my internet will behave this morning. <laughs> if um, there are any delays within the presentation, like um, I have a PDF and a PowerPoint. I'm gonna try to do the PowerPoint. It's a slightly bigger file with a few videos and more interactive things. But um, if there's a delay between me talking and the video coming out on you all's end, please let me know and I can shift over. All right. Can everybody see? Beautiful. Thank you. All right. I'm so happy to be here this morning. Um, I, it's, this is now my third year of talking to you all on a pro, and then um, Mary's River Watershed Council has been presenting to the Benton County Commission here for a number of years over our 26-year tenure as an organization. And um, so talking through the council staff here over the past year, um, we have ex been able to expand the council staff um, to bring up Jasmine Garcia, our project coordinator, to full time, which is really exciting. And then um, since a few years ago, we've been able to expand from two employees to five now, which is really exciting. Um, and as well with our board of directors, we've been able to add a few new faces here. Um, Mary's River Watershed Council is a nonprofit organization based in Benton County, Oregon was established in 1996 and um, it is part of a network of watershed councils across the state of Oregon that um, helps to restore and preserve watersheds across the state and um, when we became a watershed council the Benton County Commission helped in our formation and helped us work with the Oregon Watershed Enhancement Board to um, become an organization and as part of you all's uh, facilitation of that and as part of a web's request we provide an annual report to you all to update you on what we're doing and um, so over the past year MRWC has worked with um, over 200 students we've started to return back to safe in-person engagements outside where possible, and we are also continuing on a hybrid model that I'll talk about a little bit more. And then we've as well worked with just under 1,200 Benton County residents in the past year. So to orient us, um, 
Mary's River, the Mary's River watershed extends over a couple of different counties, but the lion's share of it is in Benton County, and the lion's share of the work we do is in Benton County. Um, is a watershed, uh, coastal cutthroat trout are our predominant indicator species, and we also work with restoration around beaver, Pacific lamprey, um, western pearl shell mussels, and other species as well too, not only with coastal cutthroat trout. Um, there are no major dams in the Marys River and it provides drinking water for both the city of Willamette and in part the city of Corvallis. And I'll briefly touch on our financials from the past year. We've been able to um, expand our revenue sources, which has been great and which has allowed us to expand our staff capacity as well. And we've been really grateful that even in spite of COVID-19, that we've been able to be stable financially and even been able to grow and grow some of our programs, which I'll talk a little bit about here soon. Talking through our education program. So, oh, I went too far. There we go. Um, in the past year, we've, as I've mentioned, we resumed in-person engagement, working with expanding our high school peer mentor program into a youth law district council. So providing career development so that um, 10 to 20 bilingual high school students that we work with each year, in addition to providing outdoor engagement opportunities such as um, swimming trips and other ways to key in. And our high school peer mentors also help us, will be helping us with our field trips with the third graders this spring here, so long as it's safe for us to do so. Um, and of course, with Omicron, we're adapting. We're taking things week by week, like many are. We also, here this fall, were able to hold a couple of field trips with Philemoth High School at Denali Creek. And um, it was really great to get two classes of students out in, in the water. We've also continued our distance learning too. We're working with um, third graders at Lincoln and Garfield Elementaries in the dual immersion Spanish English program, teaching lessons both through videos as well as um, Zoom uh, video conference interactions and lessons taught in Spanish by Jasmine, our bilingual project coordinator. And I also included in here one of the many Christmas postcards that some of our students created to send to their peers in Rio Laja, Mexico. Um, and as part of our third grade Compañeros program, we um, have some of our students work as well or help talk through either video conferencing or postcards with peers in the Rio Laja, Mexico of a similar age group. So, and um, we had our students create cards to send to our other students. A uh, program on the horizon, we're exploring the possibility of creating an outdoor school program too. And so we are um, collaborating with partners at OSU Extension, as well as um, potentially the Shot Couch Foundation and others to explore the possibility of having a local um, dual immersion Spanish English outdoor school program offering in Benton County. So our students in the school districts here locally would be able to learn in the community that they live and potentially if we were to work with Lincoln and Garfield elementaries for the fifth grade students, they'd be able to learn in Spanish too. And also on the horizon, we'll be, for anybody interested in joining, it'll be open to the public. Um, we are here working to set a date. We are hoping to have a trivia night held outside. So potentially at Common Fields or another location um, here in the next few months. And it's one way to engage with MRWC, learn about the council, and we'll be partnering with the Corvallis Climbers of Color to hold the trivia night. 
We also, um, in addition to our education program, we also work to connect with partners and to broaden our reach. And um, one of the collaborations we are involved with is the Confluence Group that is working to construct the building next to Rob Nuts downtown Corvallis and as well as works to partner on other initiatives such as a comprehensive equity, diversity and inclusion process that we had just, we are um, wrapping up the first phase right now. And um, as well, the Confluence Group is working to line up funds for the internal outfitting of the buildings so we can construct offices and such. And so we're reaching out to our networks to explore funding possibilities and, and reaching out to our communities as well. And with the Confluence building, we're so excited to hopefully hear soon in the next uh, like number of years, be able to co-locate in the same space, which has so many benefits of in, benefits both in terms of being able to walk down the hall and brainstorm with somebody in a partner organization or as well um, hopefully being able to to have an event space in the building that we can have people once it's safe to do so and yeah we're really excited for the completion of the building Another collaboration MRWC is involved with is Mid Valley River Connections. It's a collaboration of Mid Willamette Watershed Councils. Um, and the Watershed Councils is part of Mid Valley River Connections. We have a long history of working together, first over the Model Watershed Program, and um, now continuing both a peer learning initiative, as well as we are also undergoing an equity, diversity, and inclusion process right now. And um, additionally, we're exploring, uh, we have, are working among other partners with the Midwood Limit Beaver Partnership. And so working both with a comprehensive technical assistance process of analyzing using geospatial mapping areas of opportunity for beaver focused restoration across the mid Willamette and then pairing that with um, a comprehensive stakeholder engagement process understanding the major limiting factor to the establishment of beaver focused restoration as human beaver conflict and so we want to work with partners across the mid Willamette to in hopes of um, finding that sweet spot of the areas of opportunity for beaver focused restoration. Um, and for anybody who is not as familiar with the benefits of beaver on landscape, they really help do a lot of the work that Mary's River Watershed Council does too, of adding large woody debris to streams, slowing down streams, engaging floodplains, cooling waters. And so having them on the landscape and having ways that we can coexist with beavers, such as pond levelers or ways of protecting infrastructure while allowing beavers to do their thing can really be a win-win situation. And so here in the next few years, among partners in the Mid-Willamette and among partners at the Confederated Tribes of the Grand Realm, so let's Indians Natural Resources Department. So really hoping to make ground on uh, establishing this, a solid foundation for the mid Willamette Beaver Partnership. Another partner collaboration that we've been working with is an Oak Creek watershed enhancement process, working with stakeholders across Oak Creek, which flows from the Mac Forest down through a large portion of the Oregon State University campus and enters in the Marys right by Avery Park in Corvallis. And so it's one of our urban streams, but also um, it has a number of stakeholders that we are working to, we are working among stakeholders to analyze areas of opportunity for restoration, such as at Witham Hill Park, as well as um, it's the, a uh, dairy farm pop-up dam and other areas too. And so this process is continuing to go on. 
And as part of this, pro the Oak Creek stakeholder engagement process, what initially started out as a spin-off and really has formed into an even more comprehensive program has been, um, we're working to establish a trout-friendly landscapes program, working with green stormwater infrastructure across urban streams all over Benton County. So not just Oak Creek, but it did begin within partners in our Oak Creek Stakeholder Engagement Initiative. And thanks to the Benton County Commission, we're convening a technical assistance team over the next few years, over both um, starting here this past fall and ranging over the upcoming biennium or this current biennium to analyze and to analyze what our first steps should be in creating a program like this and to really lay a solid foundation as well for uh, working with partners at, partners and experts at Oregon State University as well as many others too. Um, and we are also working to leverage funds by applying to the Oregon Health Authority as well in hopes of being able to expand this program even further. Giving a quick overview of our restoration incident that had happened over the past year as well as into the years to come. In restoration plan for Oak Creek that began as part of the Oak Creek Stakeholder Engagement Initiative, we're working to set up a monthly volunteer program working in Witham Hill Natural Area for invasive species removal. And we're searching for seed funding to begin this program. And then um, as well, we're continuing to work with OSU for the few barriers to fish passage in Oak Creek. We are also continuing plant establishment activities, working with the Benton County Public Works. Um, and we're hoping here to continue to do this kind of work and expand our partnership and strengthen our partnership even further in the years to come. We have expanded our knotweed treatment program. Knotweed is a really nasty invasive species that um, has some areas that have become established in the Mary's River watershed. What knotweed does is it completely takes over, becomes a monoculture in a, in a street side area. And um, you can't control it through mechanical means because it can even reproduce from a fraction of a leaf fragment. And so if you try to mill it down, then all of the little bits of leaves that flow downstream will just take hold even further. And so we work to treat it using herbicide. And then um, similarly, we also treat yellow arch angel. And we've expanded this treatment from a few sub watersheds to all of the Marys after discovering the presence of knotweed and some of our other stream systems too. We also in 2021 completed our upper Mary system recovery which we removed three barriers to fish passage, put in a few beaver dam analogs and large woody debris into the system. And we also regraded the channel to engage the floodplain. I have a few videos. Here we're removing one of the barriers to fish passage and it's a perched culvert and we're replacing it with a bridge. And here we are, moving along placements into place. And so what, I, what that work does is both helps to allow fish in the summer to flow upstream, as well as large woody debris helps to, helps streams engage floodplain and helps slow down water to keep water in the system longer and add complexity to the channel. Um, and into the years to come, we are hoping to do a very a, a similar size restoration project in Grease Creek that is in the Muddy Creek system. And we have been eDNA sampling in Grease Creek here for a number of years and working with the Bureau of Land Management. We also have lined up funding to um, carry out a restoration process in Grease Creek where we'll be replacing a few barriers to fish passage and we'll also be working with western pearl shell mussel and ridged mussels 
and um, other species in the system as well. And we are set to return to Woods Creek to provide new infusion into the system. Here you can see pictured one of our log structures as it's engaging the floodplain. And we're working to um, add in a few new structures into an area that we have treated before, as well as to shore up a few older structures to ensure that we retain the gains from the construction that we put in about 15 to 20 years ago. And all right, I appreciate you all having me. I'm happy to take any questions. And uh, questions for Commissioner Malone? Yeah, uh, <clears throat> Holly, you, you mentioned the uh, new building and saw a picture of what it looked like on the inside. What What's the timetable for uh, moving in and actually uh, you know, getting the benefits of um, several groups being in the same location? Yeah, I think our timetable right now is really set to be determined by our success in lining up the funds for the outfitting of the build, the internal outfitting of the building. And so um, we're really working to connect with members of all of our networks to line up potential fund sources of funding for capital improvement projects like this one to help us. Um, Alan, the developer, he is building the shell of the building as part of our original agreement. The shell, some of the infrastructure within the building, like the things like some of the pipes and, and the, the floors and such. Um, and the Confluence Group is working to line up funding to pay for the walls where we want them, the conference infrastructure, the office equipment, and um, that sort of thing which is set to be somewhere around 750 to a mil 750,000 to a million dollars. And so something that we are really hitting the ground running and we have been for the past year is working to line up those funds. And so um, something that as we work within our networks, we're really hoping to find connections to help us be us all being small nonprofit organizations it's something that that's we don't have that kind of capital to front ourselves and so um yeah like looking at sources like the infrastructure funds we were going through congress last year and as well as other potential sources of funding for that and so um and it's if you all happen to have sources of funding that come across your plate as well that you would know of, please we urge you to uh, encourage us to look into them because I think that it's really, um, it, is, it is gonna take a community to help us do so, but I think that it's something that we'll hopefully be in the building in the next few years to come. Okay, thank you. I was on the Benton Soil and Water uh, Conservation District Board when this project got started, so it's nice to, uh, progress has been measured, but uh, um, moving along, and, and, and I, I, when I was on the board, I really liked the idea of uh, co-locating, and, and uh, happy to see that it's uh, getting close to uh, that idea of being realized. Yeah, definitely. And we're really excited. It's we had just this past December um, had an open house in the Confluence building. And it was so great to connect with folks in the space and to see like just to get the vision of the years to come. And yeah, it's really exciting. And, and I noticed you used the term partnership uh, several times in your presentation, and, and that's one of my favorite uh, um, terms. Uh, so many projects, uh, no one organization can 
uh, uh, get very far, but when you uh, connect with other like-minded uh, organizations, you can uh, um, get some things done. And, and, and especially when you're talking about watersheds, I mean, they, they don't stop at uh, county boundaries or, uh, but, uh, in, in fact, I'm, uh, I live and our tree farm is on the, in the Lucky Mute uh, watershed, and we've uh, uh, worked with uh, uh, that group on riparian plantings. And, uh, so, with, uh, some of your work is quite familiar. Yeah, yeah, definitely, and it's yeah we so much value all of our partners and recognize that together we're stronger we can do so much more and just like you said it's not just the mary's river the mary's river is part of a much larger system the willamette and the columbia and yeah it's um it's really exciting to be to work with both our geographic neighbors, and then as well as we've even started here and there working with some of our neighbors on the coast too. And and working with, we had a um, beaver film screening last year with a few of our neighbors and then the Stucca Watershed group. And yeah, it's um, really cool. And it's really great the just the network across the Willamette and across Oregon of, people who work together and want to work together because we can do so much. I uh, appreciate the, the update, Holly. Yeah, likewise, I appreciate you all having me today. Thank you, Thank you Holly. We really appreciate you taking the time uh, to come today and to update us on all the great projects that you guys are working on. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful yeah. day. You too. And next up on the agenda, we have a Greenbelt Land Trust presentation on partnership between Owens Farm, Owens Farms and Jackson, Jackson Fraser. And I have listed on here Lynn McKee, our Director of Natural Areas, Parks and Events, but I also see Jesse Ott. Um, we also have listed Meredith Petit with the City of Corvallis and Jessica McDonald from Greenbelt Land Trust. So whoever would like to jump in first, please do. Okay. Well, good morning, commissioners. Um, yeah, it's definitely my pleasure to bring you uh, an update on the Owens Farm project. Um, you know, we had a, a lot of partners on this project, so I just want to highlight, uh, we've got uh, Sarah Harstein, uh, Matt Gillespie, and uh, Cynthia uh, Della Torre from uh, Department of Health here that uh, played a big role in this project. And uh, we've got uh, uh, Julie Manning uh, with uh, Samaritan Health Services. Again, Meredith Pettit, uh, Director of Corvallis Parks and Rec, and Jessica McDonald, the uh, Executive Director of the Greenbelt Land Trust, along with Lynn and I. And uh, so I think um, Jessica's going to take it away. So if we can uh, make Jessica the presenter. And just to confirm, are you all seeing my screen now? Yes. Okay. So I think first up we have back to Jesse to talk about the county's role and how this fits within the larger landscape. Okay, thanks Jessica. So, you know, um, Natural Areas, Parks and Events and the Health Department really approached this project uh, through the lens of our 2040 Thriving Communities Initiative, our core values and our community health improvement plan. Um, you know, I really think, um, uh, the Owens Farm uh, Community Engagement Report uh, said it best in that uh, we believe that all members of our community, regardless of age, health, mobility, and socioeconomic status, deserve ready access uh, to nature on a trail network that accommodates users of all abilities and provides an outstanding experience with minimal impact to the resource. Thank you. And Meredith. Hey, good morning, everybody. Um, nice to see everybody and happy to be here with the partners uh, this morning. Um, we just wanted to also highlight um, as you go through this project uh, in this presentation, uh, really how this project at Owens Farm um, touches a lot of different goals and priorities and initiatives 
both with the county and the city. Um, on your screen is the Imagine Corvallis 2040 kind of top themes and categories. Engage and support, steward and sustain, learn and thrive, innovate and prosper, create and celebrate and plan and change. And really this project touches every single one of those aspects. Uh, and then moving through you know, other important city plans, we have our strategic operational plan that is built on our Imagine uh, Corvallis 2040 initiatives. Uh, the Parks and Recreation Master Plan uh, for the City of Corvallis, which really calls out uh, an increased need in parks and recreation opportunities, particularly in uh, that northeast and north uh, corner of Corvallis and, and beyond um, the city limits there. And then, you know, drilling back down into our o Owens Farm Management Plan, which was developed many years ago. Um, and uh, we look forward to you know taking these steps into uh, ultimately uh, achieving that plan as well so uh, it touches a lot of different aspects of the city so we're really proud of that thank you thank you meredith good morning commissioners i have the pleasure of walking us through today's presentation and hopefully bringing a bit of ray of sunshine into this dense foggy day for you all also, it's great to follow up on Holly Perpura's presentation about Mary's River Watershed Council, wonderful partner of ours that we work so closely with here at Greenbelt. Today, our main objectives are essentially to make sure that you're all up to speed on the history and context of this partnership, and then review, dig into the great strides that we made in 2021, and the look ahead. What does 2022 and beyond look like and how might you be able to help this project move forward. So most importantly, today we want to paint a picture for you of what we envision for the future and how our community can be transformed through personal connections to the outdoors that enriches both our hearts, our minds, and our bodies. This initiative is creating essentially a new roadmap for how we think about trails and public access in our community. Personally, I would say it's pretty exciting and I hope you all feel that to be at the drawing table for this community vision that soon is going to move from vision into reality. But first of all, let's just say where the heck is Owens Farm? Make sure that we all know where we're talking about here. So in the heart of North Corvallis sits Owens Farm and Jackson Fraser Wetlands. In this slide, we zoom out to gain perspective and see the context of the larger region and the, also the possible future connections even beyond Owens Farm and Jackson Fraser Wetlands. This is an area that is a 477 acre network of interconnected properties managed by Benton County, by Greenbelt Land Trust, the city of Corvallis, and Samaritan <coughs> Services. I'm getting a little feedback is anybody else hearing that? If somebody could mute themselves that isn't muted right now, or if the uh, person running this could mute everybody, thank you. So I know it can be difficult to see all of the inner workings of this map. You know, you can dig into that. We can we can print a larger size one for you to, to get into. But let me point out a few key details. First, with the white arrows that you see here, those are big vision, potential future regional connections. You know, imagine what a future would look like where you might come into the Sheldon neighborhood from downtown Corvallis on a multimodal path. You take a walk along the existing Jackson Fraser Wetlands boardwalk, but it extends now. And you go over a pedestrian bridge across Highway 99 into Owens Farm, and then Maybe you're an adventurous type, you continue all the way connecting to Chip Ross Park and Mac Forest. This is this big, big vision that we're looking at that Owens and Jackson Fraser is right at the heart of. And while this vision of connecting longer reaches is out there and really exciting, what I'm also most excited about at the future that we have right before us is kind of the smaller segments. The patients at Good Sam, that want to stretch their legs and through rejuvenating walk, being able to access trails at Owens Farm. Sheldon students 
getting out and doing botany classes at Jackson Fraser Wetlands, but also being able to go over and study the prairies at Owens Farm and the oak savannas. So this is a big vision, a bold idea that is in front of you. It is vast, and yet we wouldn't be here today uh, unless we all believe that it is entirely possible. So let's dial into Owens Farm proper and Jackson Fraser Wetlands. You can see Greenbelt Land Trust to the north. I think I put a, oh, there we go. It's a little bit easier once, uh, in all maps, I feel like we get the lines too light. They're too, they're colored too light. We need big, bold lines around everything. So you can see Greenbelt Land Trust to the north on both sides of Highway 99, Benton County, Jackson Fraser Wetlands. You see that. And hopefully you've all been on the boardwalks out there. And City of Corvallis really serving that roll right in the middle of the structures, the barn, the schoolhouse, the house uh, that often people see in photos or when they drive by, that's all within the city of Corvallis's trunk. And they also straddle Highway 99. And then Samaritan Health Services uh, with property adjoining the hospital. So what's so special about, why do we see that Owens Farm and Jackson Fraser Wetlands is this area brimming with possibility? What's so special about it? So first of all, it sits right on the edge of town. When the open space bond measure passed in 2001 that uh, secured the funds for a good portion of this property of the Owens farm, you know, the talking points were this is the green gateway to Corvallis, coming in, going out. So the vista here, you know, you really see this as you are on the edge of town. This is also a property that's rich with extensive historical connections and cultural connections. It has active farming on it, has a diverse mixture of wetlands, prairies, oak savanna, different habitats. And it also has this future vision of trails. And potentially that most unique aspect that we're really leveraging here is also the connection and adjacency to a hospital system, really connecting health and healthy communities with healthy people. I'm gonna ask each organization to speak for one minute about their own property. And I'll only stay on this slide briefly, mainly so that you have this information in your packet as you go forward. First, I'm gonna pass the baton to Meredith to talk about the city's portion. Yeah, thanks, Jessica. Uh, so you can see on your slide here some photos. I think the most significant features uh, in the city of Corvallis's uh, area uh, are the structures and, and the old Owens um, homestead. And what we have is an old farmhouse. Uh, we have a barn, uh, a shed, um, some other outbuildings. Um, there is some remnants of the old orchard uh, still on the property, as well as um, the schoolhouse that was uh, recently re relocated to the property from elsewhere in the community. And so the city of Corvallis is really focusing on uh, putting together a plan for securing uh, and stabilizing the structures as we move into uh, the conceptual plan that, that Jessica will walk you through uh, shortly. So thanks, Jessica. Thanks, Meredith. And I'm back to talk about our portion of Owens Farm. It's about 95 acres. We purchased our portion in 2001, 21 years ago. And it really was a first in many ways for Greenbelt Land Trust. It was our first acquisition, funded acquisition. It was our first acquisition grant, so applying to a state agency for a grant, which now is like our bread and butter. It's funny to think that was only 21 years ago. So our first property where restoration was required, so really making sure that we were working on the oak habitat, the wetland habitat, and really enhancing those features. Today, amidst restored oak woodlands, you can hear acorn woodpeckers calling to each other in the wetlands and along Jackson and Fraser Creeks that run through the portion of the property uh, of ours, you will find rare and threatened plants like Nelson's checker mellow. And throughout the year, you can see Greenbelt leading property walks from cultural history to birding, to even one of my favorites, the beers made by walking where we collect wild yeast spores and somebody made an Owens Farm funk beer out of those wild yeast spores. It was a bit funky. This is a gem of a property, one that Greenbelt has deep ties to and invested in its future. Now on to Julie Manning with Samaritan Health Services. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Jessica. It's great to be with you today. Um, 
uh, Samaritan Health purchased about 84 acres of the Owens Farm property at this same time period, uh, the uh, early 2000s, with the idea that it could help support um, the development of additional medical services as the need um, came about. And um, uh, we also are really excited to be a part of this particular project uh, as Jessica mentioned, because of the, um, the connection that we see between physical activity and um, particularly um, outdoor recreation as being such a key contributor to overall health and well-being. So the proximity of the trail, um, the trail system to our healthcare organizations and for our own employees is really exciting to us. Um, we also are sort of um, kind of um, positioned for beginning to think about the development of um, some of the property that we own um, directly north of the hospital. Um, you may remember that about five years ago, we annexed um, with the support of the Corvallis City Council about um, 18 acres um, of the total number of acres that we own. Um, uh, closest to the hospital, sort of near the helipad section of the hospital campus um, for um, future development of, of additional medical services because our, our um, current um, campus um, property is just about fully developed in terms of the um, developable land um, on the property. Um, so we're in that strategic planning process now in terms of um, sort of the highest and best use for um, services um, on the those 18 acres and adjacent parking. And so this larger, longer term vision around the Owens Farm um, plan really kind of, kind of comes into play as we continue to think about um, future needs. So thank you. Thank you, Julie. I'm gonna pass it back to Jesse to talk about Jackson Fraser. Thank you, Jessica. Okay, so um, anybody that hasn't had a chance to experience the Jackson Fraser uh, wetland and uh, boardwalk, uh, a nice foggy uh, winter day is the perfect time to experience it. It's, it's pretty fantastic out there on a day like today. So the Jackson Fraser wetland is an accessible place for people to be inspired to wander and to find a quiet refuge of solace. Uh, the Jackson Fraser wetland is a gem that is a home to a wide variety of native plants and over 70 species of birds. And uh, the most uh, famous public uh, feature of uh, that site is our boardwalk. <clears throat> and so the boardwalk was built by a group of dedicated volunteers nearly 25 years ago. Uh, the boardwalks enabled many Benton County residents to experience a working wetland in action. And we want to enhance the experience by providing responsible access to other areas on the site, including the Green Belt and City of Corvallis properties to the west. Our boardwalk is unfortunately at the end of its lifespan. It's increasingly difficult for our community members to use the uneven twisted surface of the age boardwalk. And we are currently exploring options to fund and replace the boardwalk so that we continue to provide access to a restored wetland on a trail that is accessible to all mobility levels. And um, yeah, we're really looking forward to the potential of uh, connecting and just enhancing the amount of trail system and recreation, uh, especially for that area uh, of Corvallis and Benton County. Back to you, Jessica. Thank you. Thank you, Jesse. You can see that this is not just another property. It's not just another group of partners, nor is it about only the land itself, but the broader partners that have invested untold hours into seeing the collaboration forward over years, including a few more names that go beyond the land managers, of course. Our friends at the Benton County Health Department, several of whom are here, our colleagues at AFRANA, Alliance for Recreation in Natural Areas, and also Willamette Partnership. This project goes so far beyond a trail. It is about embedding healthy people with a healthy environment and appreciating that those values are inextricably linked and that you really cannot have one without the other. Access is, a, is as much about our mental and spiritual health as it is about our physical. And I can just say this superhero collaborative we are working with is really trying to demonstrate that here at Owens Farm. So how do we do that? 
this is another slide, lots of information, don't have to read through it all, but let me direct you to a few key elements. This is a framework that partners developed early on for Owens Farm. Essentially, how do we make good on this vision of promoting mental wellness, improving physical health, strengthening social connections? You know, the answers are multifold, including reducing barriers to the outdoors, activating engaging programming, increasing access to the site for everyone, and enhancing the natural features of the property. We call this a framework rather than a plan because it is meant to be adaptive and grow as the list of participants, collaborators, partners also continues to grow and we evolve together and listen and engage with the broader community. So I know this looks great on paper, but what does it look like really on the land? This is a zoomed in portion of the, uh, what we're naming the conceptual trail plan for Owens Farm, which was developed in late 2021, utilizing that framework on the last slide to envision a network of trails and trailheads, educational opportunities, restoring the structures, being able to use those, including interactive signage, universally accessible trails create loops. Those are those red and black dotted lines that you see. They create loops and meanders with benches at vistas overlooking the valley. Now for 20 years, Owens Farm, at Owens Farm, we have promised trails and educational access to our community. It was embedded into the vision we described through that open space bond measure, and is embedded into the management plans of each of the partners that touch this property. 20 years, now is the time to activate the vision. And with this conceptual trail plan you see before you, we are taking that original vision from two decades ago and expanding it beyond what we thought was possible at the time. We see individuals of all ages and abilities finding community along these trails, learning about the natural world around them, here you see a rendering of what that vision might look like. I'll also mention that over the last couple of years, we had a great opportunity to work with landscape architecture students at University of Oregon, a class that dedicated an entire term just to working on Owens Farm and helping us put to paper, uh, really see visually. It helps so much to actually see a photo of what you know this trail concept plan might look like. We see opportunities to transition farmed fields into restored native prairies, teaching future generations about the importance of biodiversity. We see Owens Farm opening the door to new trail users of all physical abilities to find a welcoming and accessible natural world for them. So this is a big vision, it is tangible and real, and this is what leads us up to 2021. So core to this vision is listening to our community and soliciting ideas from people who have often found barriers to belonging in feeling welcomed in the outdoors and on trails. These are the voices that must drive the partnership work. And the summer of 2021 was a time to expand that circle and make sure that those voices were helping set the direction forward. Over the course of several months in 2021, the partners, uh, coordinated with a uh, wonderful intern, Sylvia Arzmedi, sponsored outings at Owens Farm. They sponsored one-on-one -on -one interviews for community members from different uh, backgrounds and abilities to gain insight into what they see, what they want to see on walking trails. This is also that sweet spot, you know, post-vaccinations, pre-Omicron, when we could be outside together. And it was like, thankfully we hit that little sweet spot. So this community engagement phase was scheduled early in the process. You know, we didn't have that whole trail concept, conceptual trail plan, because we wanted this input first before we, the partners designed the trail to give traditionally underserved communities the opportunity to per participate and help build that vision. The findings from this report are summarized uh, in a report that I'd be happy, I'm sure any of us would be happy to share with the commissioners following the presentation. Shown here are four key takeaways or recommendations that came out of that report. Essentially, recommendations focused on fostering a sense of belonging and inclusion, access to nature, cultivating a feeling of safety and comfort and enjoyment in the outdoors. 
I think when we say public access, there is an implication that all places that have public access are available to all. As a partnership, we have learned more and more about the myriad racial, physical, societal, and cultural barriers that so many people face when accessing the outdoors and that so many of us take for granted, that I have taken for granted. One thing we also know is that 25% of Oregonians experience a disability, 25%, one in four. With this partnership at Owens Farm, we are attempting to expand access, reduce barriers, and create new social connections in a safe and welcoming space. As we wrapped up this initial community engagement phase, we are now poised for the year ahead. This is a snapshot of the main pieces for 2022. I guess it's almost February already. Another way to look at this timeline is to highlight the four main focus areas for the year ahead that uh, the partners are working on. And these are those. So first of all, let's get real. There is a lot of work that needs to happen in order to make this vision a reality. And yet, for sure, this is the collaborative, the coalition to do it. The partners have divvied up roles and assignments and leadership amongst these four core areas for 2022. Funding, trails take money, planning takes money, stabilizing building takes a lot of money. We have a group focused on developing the fundraising strategy, soliciting funds to move this forward. Engagement, so last year we did the uh, pub phase one of public engagement, really targeted at underserved communities. In 2022, that public engagement goes to the next phase, which incorporates neighbor input and buy-in and feedback, as well as the general public. The excitement is palpable. Neighbors are calling. I think there is even a neighbor here joining us, asking how to get involved, how to support this going forward. We wanna harness the goodwill and power of our community to help kind of refine the trail vision and help uplift uh, the work ahead. Third is long range planning. The vision for the property touches so many regional plans. Uh, Jesse and Meredith touched on that at the very beginning. Right now, we have a great opportunity to ensure that the conceptual trail plan at Owens Farm is included within the 2043 Regional Transportation Plan, which all the partners here have submitted testimony and notes to um, the group working on that to advocate that the Owens Farm Conceptual Trail Plan is included within the 2043 RTP. Trail construction. Yes, even thinking about a phase one of some trail construction. All of that in the year ahead. So commissioners, among these four points of our work, we see your support being valuable in all of them, but especially within the long range planning, as we work to advocate that the inclusion of Owens Farm conceptual trail plan, including the pedestrian bridge crossing Highway 99 to adjoin Owens Farm and Jackson Fraser wetlands is included within that long range plan. I will also make a separate plug that if you have ideas on fundraising, hey, all ears would love that as well. Ideas and directions for us to be thinking about for funding that may funnel through the county please, we'd love for you to be part of that. On behalf of this talented group of partners, thank you, commissioners. Your ongoing support for the collaborative is appreciated. Last week at our partners meeting, Rocio Munoz, uh, the health equity coordinator of Benton County, an awesome partner of this project, said, more than ever right now, this property and this project matters. I couldn't agree more, and all the partners here couldn't agree more. And since we have so many of our partners here to be strong advocates and ambassadors for this, I'm going to stop screen sharing so that we have um, some time for Q&A and any of our partners here would be able to answer. Thank you so much, commissioners. And I will try to find the stop screen share on this one. Thank Rich. you, Jessica. Um, I do have a couple questions, and uh, the first one is about our Jackson Fraser Boardwalk. Um, do we is that on the CAP? Do we know how much an estimate would be? I mean, do we have sort of um, plans out there already for it? Yes. So we are working through it. We are on the CAP for this biennium. 
Um, it's not quite enough to, you know, the project, you know, um, when we started, we initially started pricing everything out and trying to look at options uh, for materials and uh, then the building materials went through the roof uh, this summer and then kind of skewed our numbers, but um, we're not all the way there yet. Um, we're working really hard with uh, the Alliance for Recreation and Natural Areas and, uh, you know, trying to formulate a plan uh, moving forward. But the uh, estimates for replacement of that boardwalk can span, you know, really anywhere from 600000 to a million dollars, uh, you know, kind of depending. So um, it's a big project, but... Um, you know, it's really, it's really uh, the highlight uh, of recreation, especially in that part of town. And, uh, you know, just the opportunity to even think about being able to connect it with even more recreation opportunities is just absolutely exciting. So that's where we're at right now, uh, Commissioner, just trying to um, uh, work our way through that and, uh, you know, try to secure grant funding and, and see how we can get to the finish line. Great. Thank you. And Jessica, similar question for you. Um, I know it seems like you have a lot of maybe phases and big parts of it, um, but do you have a, a general dollar amount that you're shooting for? So part of the fundraising uh, team that has just been identified of who's going to divvy up between those roles, we'll be refining some of those dollar figures. Uh, so we have some initial sort of cost per square foot of like what, what it takes to actually build universal trails at this size, et cetera, this dimension. But there are also, and then we have some quotes about stabilization of buildings. So kind of like bringing other and saying, how do we really look at an overall number for the project and mm -hmm. breaking that into phases? So I will be happy to share more with you as soon as I would say in the next um, near term, in the next couple of months, as we really refine that into specific dollar figures and break those down into the phases over the next couple of years as well. Great. Thank you. Commissioner Malone, questions or comments? Oh, absolutely. I, I'm not sure where to start, but uh, I think it was uh, fall of 2019 and there was a, a tour of Owens Farm. Is that, do I have the timetable about right? Um, Pre-COVID, I guess, is another way to put it. But uh, uh, what impressed me on the tour is our, the Bend County Health Department uh, folks were there in um, pretty good numbers, and uh, I, I, in addition to, uh, I can't remember if you were there, Julie, but I'm sure um, uh, Samaritan was well represented, and just making those connections that that it's uh, it's not just uh, this isn't just a project for outdoor enthusiasts. It's uh, to uh, encourage everyone to uh, get out and, and uh, I think uh, even not even thinking about COVID but just uh, being outside is healthy. I mean I, I feel that in my in my bones um, and here I am looking at a screen and uh, Kings Valley weather report it's full sun here uh, and so uh, there is hope for you in the valley that uh, the sun is coming. But um, uh, so the connection, some of the connections are with people and uh, different agencies. But uh, I loved your slide, Jessica, about making connections between Jackson Frazier, Owens Farm, Chip Cross Park. Um, uh, we have these. Uh, gems kind of scattered around our area, and uh, I, I think it's. Uh, I appreciate the long way, long range uh, vision of. Oh, we can we can connect these and and make a a system rather than isolated um, uh, areas. And one of my uh, initiatives is. Uh, uh, pedestrian and bike paths and um, doing my best to uh, encourage the path along uh, Highway 20 between uh, Corvallis and, and Albany. And I'm cautiously optimistic that that has enough momentum that um, uh, within a couple of years we will have that one. But my uh, next attention would be 
uh, along Highway 99W uh, north of Corvallis, which would uh, get be at least one way to get to Owens Farm and then uh, continue to uh, Adair, and and uh, which is right across from McDonald Forest. And so, uh, once again, th thinking of uh, paths as uh, systems, and uh, you start out with uh, with one and, and add to it and make connections and. Uh, shows the importance of uh, long range vision, having the plan and then being opportunistic with funding opportunities and to uh, um, make that uh, go. And uh, I assume, Jessica, at some time you will make a plug for your annual meeting, which is coming up next, next month. So uh, really, Appreciate the report. Uh, this is this is one of the most fun meetings with that I've had in a while. So thank you. <laughs> Last Friday was pretty fun, right? No, just kidding. Um, Sarah, Sarah Hartsey, I see you clicked on. Did you have a comment you wanted to add? I, I just wanted to add a quick comment. Um, I, you know, Commissioner Willow, thank you so much for embracing this project as, and recognizing it as something that impacts um, the health of our community. Uh, Benton County Health Department has been a, a partner since the very beginning. And uh, obviously we have not been able to be involved in the same way um, that we were prior to the pandemic um, in the last couple of years. But I'm so proud of this collaboration because every partner has such a deep commitment to universal access and uh, equity and, in, and inclusion, um, recognizing that, that this opportunity provides um, a way for all, you know, all Benton County residents to enjoy the outdoors, fall in love with the outdoors, and then uh, conserve the outdoors. And so um, I'm grateful for that. And uh, um, our, our team is committed to being involved. And I will tell you, this is my most exciting meeting too. <laughs> of the week. We love this project. So I also wanted to very quickly introduce you to Cynthia De La Torre. She's our new community outreach and engagement coordinator. Um, I don't know, Cynthia, if you can uh, um, show, your, show your camera um, and just uh, a wave to folks here. <laughs> She comes to us from Casa Latinos Unidos and has really strong grassroots connections to our Latinx uh, community in Benton and Lynn counties um, and is looking forward to, to making strong connections to other hard to reach populations in Benton County. So we're beginning to fold her into this project um, and look forward to having her on board. And then of course, Matt Gillespie is here, our Healthy Communities Coordinator. Mac, if you can um, just wave to folks and, and he's you know been a long time um, a staff member engaged in this project as well. So we're just thrilled to see this project be at this phase and we're so extremely grateful for our partners. Thank you, Sarah. I just wanted to jump in real quick uh, to follow up on Sarah's uh, comments. Um, when I took over uh, Parks and Natural Areas from Lori Starha, this is one of the projects he handed to me. And when I started reading through the initial proposals of, I was so thrilled. To uh, you know, to partner with this, and then bringing Jesse Ott on board with his parks background has been great. So I just want to thank Jessica for her wonderful presentation and all of our partners, and and I really look forward to pushing this uh, project onto that uh, that first phase and really seeing some of this implemented. And so now it's time to find money, right? Yes, yes. <laughs> but thank you, uh, thank you all our partners to get us to this point. It's great. Thank you, Lynn. And I did see a question in the chat. Um, someone asked, how might we best encourage that Owens Farm Conceptual Trail Plan be included as part of the Regional Transportation Plan? And thank you, Jesse Ott. I saw that you answered that in the comments. You put a link um, where comments can be submitted to Campo. And Commissioner Malone, am I correct in remembering that you were on Campo or affiliated? Oh, you're muted. We can't hear you, Commissioner Malone. <laughs> oh, I said some really good stuff before I turned the mic on. Um, 
the uh, I, I uh, serve on multiple tra uh, transportation uh, committees in uh, Campo, which is Corrales area. MPO uh, is, is one of them, and I would be um, more than happy to uh, champion this uh, effort. Um, it it um, and uh, Campo uh, has um, representatives from ODOT uh, on it, and, and so it, it's it's a way of uh, turning a, a good idea, a plan. Uh, and there's one of them. Uh, hi, James. Um, to um, uh, actually uh, get trails and paths uh, done, and uh, I'm cautiously optimistic with uh, uh, the infrastructure bill that uh, Congressman DeFazio has uh, championed, and then it, it got modified in the Senate, but uh, significant. Uh, 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 new funding is, is uh, coming our way in the in the next five years. But uh, and, and like I've said earlier, it takes partnerships to get uh, uh, projects like this uh, across the finish line. And I think we've got great partners. Yes, I really appreciate uh, the partnership and the collaboration and all the hard work. Um, you know, teamwork makes the dream work. So thank you, everyone. Any last uh, comments or questions? Commissioner, I just would really like to, um, in addition to um, thanking all of you for giving us the time to provide the update, I really wanted to acknowledge uh, the Greenbelt Land Trust and the, the role that they have played throughout this um, project, um, convening the work group and really um, helping to keep us moving forward. Um, and uh, it's exciting to see the uh, progress that's been made thus far, and, and we're really just getting going. So I wanted to publicly express uh, our appreciation for their, for their leadership role in this effort. So thank you. Thank you, Julie. Thank you, all the partners. Thank you, commissioners. And I feel like I just want to send big heart you know, out to you all. It's like, what a great ray of sunshine this uh, group is, this conversation is, this idea and vision is, and a community that we live in that can really advance uh, projects like this and interconnected projects like this. So that's a good day. Pat. Yeah, uh, Jessica, you were uh, kind of uh, saying how, how long this uh, Owens Farm project has taken and, and uh, which, which is true, but uh, uh, I, I think of the Bald Hill project, and I, and I would guess it, it had a similar uh, timetable where uh, you had the idea and uh, had maps and plans, and, and uh, it took a, uh, maybe a couple decades to uh, have it come to fruition, but uh, there it is, and, and uh, a lot of usage. It's it's in a great part of uh, our community, and uh, so it's convenient. And and I think Owens Farm has the same uh, kind of potential. So uh, don't feel bad about the, how long it's taken. It's uh, we're headed in the right direction. Thank you, Commissioner Malone. Thank you everyone so much uh, for coming and sharing all that great information with us. And before we move on in the agenda, uh, we will just take a five minute break. Um, so we will come back at 10, 14.
I am so ready. Perfect. I was just going to say, why is it every time I unmute, I get an email and <laughs> all the notifications. All right. So next on the agenda, we have information sharing. And uh, it looks like I am first up. I do not have a lot for you today, but I just wanted to share something that I'm excited about. Um, I applied for the Local Officials Advisory Committee, the LOAC, which is a group of city and county elected officials. Um, it's appointed by the Land Conservation and Development Commission. And the LOAC advises and assists the LCDC and the DLCD on its policies and programs affecting local governments. So lots of uh, land use and community development stuff. And it would be awesome if I got on it. Uh, it looks like it's pretty competitive, so who knows? Uh, but I did apply and we'll find out what they think. And let's see, next up on the agenda, uh, Commissioner Malone, do you have anything you'd like to share today? Yeah, see, I turned my mic on and everything. A um, uh, couple things. Uh, should have asked Lynn McKee when she was here, but uh, the uh, planning and, and uh, uh, exhibit hall uh, project at the fairgrounds is is proceeding. Uh, it's in the design phase, and uh, I think even even with a little uh, delays and things that come uh, with a big uh, project. Uh, uh, the, the plan is to have it open for business by uh, the fair of 2023. So uh, basically a year and a half from now. And uh, that's pretty exciting, kind of like the last uh, presentation is, uh, we've been talking about this for a while and, and it's, uh, we uh, have the opportunity to make it real. So that's um, that's exciting. Um, I was thinking about that uh, that uh, this morning that um, our CFO Rick uh, Crager, I believe, last month gave us a presentation on the the county's uh, borrowing situation and a couple different scenarios, and I didn't have time to uh, find that, but with our uh, we've got some uh, large uh, projects uh, on our radar that uh, we're proceeding with, and, and uh, it, it would um, I would appreciate an update just what our options are, and and uh, as far as purchasing the property and some uh, some other um, the. Uh, uh, Lumen um, property that we're um, engaged in discussions. And so uh, just to, uh, I guess, uh, give me a better uh, sense of where our um, financial situation is. And uh, what I remember from Rick's presentation was, well, if you borrow the money that now, then that, um, uh, precludes uh, you know, uh, future projects. And so just uh, go over those kind of uh, trade-offs, I think uh, would be uh, would be helpful sometime in the uh, fairly near future, uh, perhaps at goal setting or, but uh, 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 just so that we don't, that we don't surprise ourselves with, Oh well, you committed here, and now you are limited uh, what you can do over here. So, uh, and um, you mentioned the uh, LCD LCD um, advisory group. Uh, I also saw notice uh, for a. Uh, this may not be quite accurate, but a courthouse advisory group. And do you know if if Zan is on that, or uh, is that one we're 
um, uh, pursuing or ignoring or uh, what's the what's the status? I guess. Uh, I from, from the top of my head, I believe Zan is attending or has attended recently, and I'm trying to remember if I heard if we have staff or not on there. Okay. But I know Zan, uh, it's on her radar at least. Okay, I, I thought we had that covered, but I. I um, I wasn't sure. And uh, I don't know enough about it to say, well, we should have somebody there or we do have somebody there, but just uh, we have lots of opportunities for meetings. So um, that, uh, <laughs> yes, that was a joke. All right, thank you. Um, uh, opportunities. Uh, and I think that that's it. Uh, uh, I'll get it on my schedule, but I've got a, a late June vacation uh, on the books or in my head anyway. And I mean, I, I'm not, I can't remember if I put it on my calendar or not. Um, that's, that's my report, unless there's any uh, questions or. Thank you, Christian. What's that? <clears throat> I was just going to say, uh, you know, we have a, I'll be a, on the agenda setting meeting on Wednesday so I can, uh, I'll make sure that I bring up the part about an update from Rick Krager and Lumen and all that stuff. Well, and uh, I would defer to his judgment whether uh, fairly soon or a month from now, or but uh, I would like to get it uh, on our radar so we don't so we don't get surprised perfect all right and then lastly we have last but not least acting county administrator matt weatherall what updates do you have for us today i don't really have anything specific um, going around the or countywide i did have a clarifying question for commissioner malone you're just wanting an update from Rick, similar to the one he gave about a month ago. Is that correct about borrowing capabilities, yep. uh, pending purchases we have? Okay. Yep. He had, he had charts and graphs, and and uh, I believe uh, we have that. I, I didn't have time to do a search this morning, but uh, that that was uh, in the three years I've uh, been here. That that's the most by far the most discussion of what our current situation is and a couple uh, scenarios. So, uh, and I, I would defer to Rick, uh, maybe there, uh, uh, he, he wouldn't have updates, but uh, if there are, I think it would be timely. Just, uh, we're, we're making large decisions and uh, for, you know, starting the process anyway, and and just what what are what are the effects? Okay, I will have a well. I can't have a conversation with him, but I will call him. Yeah. Is is he back yet, or is he still? No, he's he's still stuck. Um, he had to take a test today. If it's negative, he'll be on a plane tomorrow morning. If not, he has to wait until he gets a negative, or the doctor on site can get him cleared because he isn't showing any symptoms. So that's kind of where he is right now. At least that was the update I had this morning. And where where is he? He's in Cancun, I believe. So oh, there's okay. places to be stuck. Okay. Um, I, can, I can think of worse places to be stuck. So. <laughs> yes, I can um, The only thing that I can say is I think uh, Omicron is maybe starting to hit staff a little bit. I can only, I don't have any information across county. I can just speak to the juvenile department. I have three positives currently, um, which has limited our ability to, I think there's two people in the office today, but it's something that we're continually monitoring. It's about the only thing that I have. I don't know what other departments are looking at. I know the sheriff that made mention when it ran through his department also. So we're just working through it. Just to put it on your guys' radar that we may be a little slower with some response based on that, but we're doing the best we can. Well, and uh, I heard something on NPR about uh, 
being vaccinated is is very helpful. Being boosted uh, seems to really um, make a difference with Omicron. So, um, but it's uh, hopefully it has peaked or is about to peak, and uh, I've asked our health department folks, well, what does the decline look like? And not, not real sure, although I think the East Coast is two or three weeks ahead of us. And so there are, we, we should have a pretty good idea what the decline curve looks like. Hopefully it's steep, as, as steep as the ramp up, but uh, don't know yet. Yep. It's rough. And that's all I have. Thank you, Matt. Well, uh, and after our last report, maybe just stay outside a lot, and uh, 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 that would slow down the spread. All right. Well, that brings us to other on the agenda, and I don't believe we have any others. Is there? Nope, no other. I almost forgot to use my gavel today. All right. Well, I will adjourn the meeting today at 1026 a.m. Thank you, and everyone have a great day. And, and it is sunny in Kings Valley, so uh, I, I don't know what you guys have, but uh, I bring yet. my own. I bring my own sunshine. Okay.